We're doing this right now because at the end of integers, right, we know how to combine all these different kinds of numbers in all kinds of different ways, right? Now we know all our operations, I'm interested in how we can put them together in the right combination. Yes? <coughs> the day is the 8th of April. The 8th of April. 8th of April. Okay, now when you have a look at this, simple, simple mathematical expression, I'm a little bit puzzled. Because when I look at this, I'm not entirely sure what this thing is equal to. Here's what I mean. Okay, um, here we go. What's 3 plus 4? 7. 7. So if I say 3 plus 4 is 7, and then I multiply that by 2, I get 7 times 2 14. be 14. Very good. But, but, if I look at this, if I look at this, stop. Remember, try and go through this as quickly as possible. So allow me to do that. If I look at it another way and say, well, maybe I shouldn't add the 3 and the 4 first. Maybe I should multiply the 4 and the 2 first. 4 times 2, of course, eight. is 8. <coughs> Excuse me. If you say 3 plus 8, you get, which is somewhat different to what I got in the first place. Okay? And this is, kind of, this is kind of strange and a little bit problematic for me because really, I want a language that means the same thing to everyone, no matter which way you look at it, right? Like that's the usefulness of language to be able to communicate with someone else, okay? If I say something like a dog, okay? You want to all be thinking of the same thing with four legs and a tail that wags. You want to have the same idea in your head, otherwise we cannot communicate. So if I look at this one statement and there are two ways to read it, that's a bit of a problem for me, okay? The issue really is these things here, the plus and the times, the operations, right? I need to know what order I should do them in, right? Which one should come first? That's why this idea is called, you know what we call? Yep. Order. Okay, no, no, no. no. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. This whole thing, because it's about the order in which I do this plus minus times divide the record. The heading is order of operations. Now, you will notice I am very, very deliberately Avoiding talking about any acronyms, right? Now there are a few acronyms out there. You don't don't write this down, but the most common ones are bot mass, bid mass, and our friends in America will all, all call it PEMDAS. Now don't write those down. The reason why I don't want you to write them down is because acronyms, right? They're kind of handy to help you remember things but they don't help you understand things, okay? And I definitely, definitely do not want you to memorize one of these, these abbreviations, and say, oh, okay, this is what it's all about. I just have to get this set of rules and apply it mindlessly to this, and then I'll get the right answer at the other end. Rules like that, like mindlessly going through rules like that, is for robots, your human beings, your mathematicians. I want you to be thinking about these things, right? So, rather than this, I want you to have a little subheading under this, which is, what do the operations mean? What do the operations mean? Now, I'm just going to give you a little bit of an idea under this. We're not going to go all the way, bless you, because we don't even know what all of the operations are yet. We've got four of them, but there are more, okay? So I just want to give you a very, very brief introduction to this, right? And this will help us at least answer this question for us, okay, this particular one. So what do the operations mean? Let's think about this for an example, okay? You remember up here, I said seven times two. Seven times two, right? What does multiplication actually mean? Seven times two, it's actually an abbreviation for something, so, right? Does anyone know what it's an abbreviation of? Seven plus seven. Okay, it's either an abbreviation of seven plus seven. I will point out that seven plus seven and seven times two not much of an abbreviation, right? It's like, oh look, I've got three things, three characters, or I've got three characters. What would be a longer form of that that's still equal to seven times two? What else could it be abbreviated? Yes? Okay, thank you. I think we got the right number, right? I've written two seven 
times, right? In fact, that's why we use the word seven times as synonymous with multiplication, because you're literally doing something seven times, okay? All multiplication is, is an abbreviation of addition. In fact, that's so important we should all write it down, right? Because when you think about what the operations mean, a lot of them are just shortcuts for the others. So multiplication is an abbreviation It's an abbreviation of addition. It's like, look, if I want to do addition a whole bunch of times, but I don't have to write it out a whole bunch of times, then I will just use this times sign, multiplication, right? It's kind of like a shortcut, because as I keep saying to you, mathematicians are famously lazy. We want to write as little as possible. So I will write rather than this, I'll write this. It's quicker, right? Therefore, you can see if multiplication is abbreviation of addition, Right? If you read something like, um, I don't like it. There's an abbreviation in that sentence, right? What's the abbreviation? So, yes, Radesh. Don't. Don't, which of course is an abbreviation for? Do not. Do not, right? So, you really have to think about the abbreviation first, sort of expand it, and you're mentally doing that anyway, before you think about the whole sentence. And exactly the same thing is happening here, okay? Which part of this sentence, this little phrase, is the abbreviation? Oh, sorry, Nikhil. Okay, good, there. Right here, okay? This 4 times 2 is in fact short for 4 plus 4, right? So 3 plus 4 times 2, I want to look at the abbreviated part. I want to work out what it actually means, which is 3 plus, and I could do this either way. We've got two different ways we could write this sum, 4 times 2, right? I could do 4 plus 4, or what would be another way that comes from 4 times 2? Just like we had it here. Yeah, okay. 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2. Very good, okay. Those both mean the same thing. Two fours and four twos, okay? And of course here, no matter which way you do it, if you really understand what multiplication means, you're going to get the same answer at the end. 3 plus these are both equal to 8, which gives us 11. This guy over here is bogus, okay? So, what I'm trying to get across here is, remember when I showed you those acronyms before? Those acronyms tell you, do multiplication before you do addition, right? But it's not because someone wrote down in an arcane scroll and centuries ago, oh, we better do that, that's the rule. It's because of what multiplication is and what it means. Question. Why do you put brackets around the... Okay, I'm so glad you asked. Now, brackets are the last really important piece that I'm going to get under this operations thing, right? Suppose, suppose I actually did want to do the 3 and the 4 first. Like, maybe I want to double a group of things over here and another group of things over here. What could I do to this statement to say, do these first? Yeah. Put brackets. Yeah, very good. Brackets like that... They now mean, okay, anything you see in brackets, you do that first. Now that I put brackets in or put them in blue, you can see this is what's going to happen. And it would be 14 in this case. Okay? So over here what I'm doing is I'm using brackets to indicate, hey, look, I'm trying to draw attention to these things. It's a bit like highlighting with their colors. Do this first. This is the most important thing. And you can do that to change the order if you want. Okay? Which is why in Bodmas, the B is first. It stands for brackets, right? Um, the Americans who have P in the front, that word stands for, does anyone, that letter stands for, does anyone know what it stands for? Parentheses, which is just another word. I'll write it, I'll spell it for you so you know what it means. I'm to write it. Parentheses, in this context, is another word for brackets, okay? Was there a question? Yeah. Wait, I have two questions. Yep. Uh, what is, what's out of curiosity, what is uh, big mass and yeah, sure, okay. So, we'll write this, um, you may like to now write it down. Now that you get, this is not about mindlessly following rules, it's about a way to remember what's going on. The B stands for brackets, okay, so anytime you see these brackets. The I, this is one of the reasons why I don't, I don't like learning this law now, the I actually stands for index or indices, which is not something we've covered yet. We will, we will, I promise, but it's like, oh, what's that about, okay? And you can't really learn business, you need, a, you need a vowel in there, okay? The D and the M, what do you think they stand for? Because there's an operation that comes first, an operation that comes second. Yeah, Aaron? Division and multiplication. Division and multiplication. 
Now, when you have a look at the acronym, it kind of seems to imply you do division first and then multiplication. But that's not true. Multiplication and division, what do they mean? They're just kind of flip sides of each other. We looked at this yesterday, right? Like multiplying by three or dividing by three is just making something three times bigger or making it three times smaller. Okay? So really these are one unit, the D and the M, which is why in the American version, which I told you is this, they have it switched around, right? So that M, D, D, M, that order doesn't matter, right? They're one thing together. And you can see, just to end, what do you think these guys stand for? And yeah, Bradley? Addition and subtract. Add, subtract. And again, it could have been called bin sa because you can do the subtractions first in the additions. We generally just go left to right, just like we normally read. It's not as though the A has to be first. Do all the adding first and then the subtractions. It's not like that.